Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, it's just going to be a brief introduction to the standard algorithm library, which we're going to be talking about throughout the next few videos. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. But what is the standard algorithm library? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at CPP reference and start looking at some of the algorithms that exist and talk about why we might want to learn the standard algorithm library that's part of the standard template library and otherwise why it might be useful for us. So anyways, what we're going to take a look at is algorithms here. Now, the algorithms library has well over 100 or so algorithms and more are being added here. And the algorithms library itself has been around since about 1994 as part of the standard template library. And they work with the containers that we've been talking about in this series, as well as the iterators. In fact, I'll try to illustrate that a little bit when we talk about uh, some particular algorithms. But generally speaking, what we're going to be talking about in this series is both the constrained algorithms in C++20, which works with ranges, as well as the pre-C++20 algorithms that exist using typically a pair of iterators. So we'll talk about some of the C++17 stuff uh, first, and then we'll move on to talk about ranges and the constrained algorithms as we progress forward, just as the development of C++ was. Now, for those of you who are using or perhaps using, say, C++17 or before, something that you could do if it's easy just to see um, fewer of the algorithms is to actually just go to this page, go to the history here, and then you could backtrack if you wanted. Uh, let's say, let's find revision uh, back here to November. We might still have some C++20 stuff, um, but this will get rid of, of all the ranges stuff, just if you want to filter this list. Although I'd recommend always using the new page, because even with some of the algorithms that might be since, say, C++11, there would be updates. Um, but again, just use that as a filter. So I'm not going to do that in general, but uh, again, if your environment only allows you to use C++, say, 11, you could filter by going back in the history just to see what's available. But keep using this page here. So anyways, there was a big change here in C++20 with ranges, which really makes it a lot easier for us to do things like sort, for instance. We can just sort the entire vector. Okay, so that's the idea here. We'll get into ranges. We'll have to talk about ranges first before we get into this. Now, uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the algorithms here, and then we'll talk again about some of the motivation here. Now, we've got sort of these non-modifying sequence operations. We've got modifying sequence operations. Let's see some other categories here. Partitioning operations, sorting, uh, searching, binary searching specifically. Some other things we can do on ranges, set operations, heap operations, min-max operations, comparisons, permutations, other numeric operations, and some other operations on memory here. And then uh, from the C library, you do have quick sort and uh, uh, B search here. So we have quite a range of things uh, that we can do here. And in fact, if I go back here, I'll also show you uh, there is numeric algorithms here, which let's go ahead and take a quick look here for doing some other things, things like LERP and midpoint and so on. So we're going to talk about all these things uh, over time, um, or at least some subset of a few of these algorithms in each category so you can just understand what's available. That's the main important thing for understanding uh, the algorithm library. Now, there's a few things to motivate you as to why to learn standard algorithm versus just writing these all by yourself. So let's go ahead and highlight a few of those things here and just kind of list them out. And really the thing uh, to keep in mind is that we have our containers over here that we've been learning about, things like vector, list, um, dex, and so on. We have our iterators, which sort of sit in the middle here, accessing the containers in various positions. And then we have our algorithms, okay, which take our data in this container and transform it into some different form here. Okay, so that's what we have. We've looked at uh, containers so far here in this series. Uh, we've looked at iterators as well, and now we need to cover algorithms. And there certainly is a range. Now, why to use these though? Well, for one thing with these algorithms is they're well tested. Okay, so we can at least have some reasonable assurance that most of the algorithms have been used by hundreds of thousands, millions perhaps of C++ developers, something within that range there. So you could reasonably have some understanding of these algorithms work well. 
They're also basic building blocks. Basic building blocks that are probably things that we want to think about using in our code that are expressive. Uh, so I'll put that under here. They're expressive. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and just kind of take a little look at this. I mean, we've already looked at things like range-based for loops, but we've had for each, for instance, as part of the algorithm. And that's very clear that we're doing this for the entirety of some container, unless we exit out early, for instance. Or we have things like counting. Or, for instance, if we go down here, we have things like copying. Now, again, the reason that this is sort of nice to just have a function call and to copy here is that then instead of writing the loop that says for each element i you know equals zero i less than or even a range based loop i mean this is just a one liner for what we're doing in our code so again uh, this expressive point here is very important here okay uh, so i really like that uh, the algorithms themselves are uh, generic uh, also sort of put here supporting generic programming their function uh, or i should say their uh, templated uh, functions, which means they're pretty widely available, meaning you can use these on your containers, vector, deck, list, forward list, etc., as appropriate, and be reasonably sure that, again, they're going to be available for most of the data structures that you want to work with. And I'll also say that they're reasonably performant, okay? Uh, I'll put reasonably, let me qualify that, performant. Perform it. Okay, because we have to sort of quantify reasonably with actually running this on the experiment. So first and foremost, what do I mean when I'm talking about performance? Well, let's just go ahead and find one here. Uh, let's look through and find maybe like sort or something, something that we might want to do common or maybe even reverse here. How about that? Let's reverse all of our elements. Well, the first thing when I'm talking about performance is being able to understand the complexity, especially if we're working with large data sets. That has to be uh, defined here so that we can actually compute it or have some idea of what the performance is. That's the first thing with understanding performance beyond profiling and so on. And the second thing that I'll say here, if I go back to the uh, algorithm library here, is we often do have a pathway for speeding up our code. So there's various execution policies, which we'll have to talk about later in this series, where we can, for instance, uh, have a pathway for running code in, say, parallel here. So let me go ahead and put this here. Pathway to parallel. OK, uh, and I'll say with uh, execution policies. OK, so even if we're just writing our code in a sequential manner through a, say, range based loop or for each or something, we could actually run with this parallel policy and potentially gain some speed up, especially if we're working on data parallel problems. So again, this is something very nice uh, that we could work with. And then the last thing I'll say again under this performance is you can revise later. OK, meaning that if you have some operation like copy, for instance, whether it is just the generic copy or something that you're doing with maybe uh, uninitialized memory, uh, again, this is reasonably expressive code that you're writing. So you could probably figure out what the details are later on. So I think getting something up and running, doing the simplest thing possible with building blocks in the standard algorithm library in the STL uh, is a great place to start. It's great to know about. Everyone sort of knows about this terminology. And even if you don't end up using the STL, uh, and let me go ahead and put this in another one here, it will inform, it says may inform uh, your own STL, okay? Because you might end up writing your own library of algorithms. I think it's still useful to look at these building blocks regardless so that you understand like, hey, it might be useful to have these types of sorting algorithms, or this is what a heap uh, set of heap operations looks like. Again, you might have some of this experience yourself, but again, these are just useful things to know about what's available and where you can improve it. So folks, this is the direction we're going to be going for the next few videos. I just want to give you a brief introduction to algorithm. And you're going to see me talk about this in general, um, where we start in this series with our algorithms as just having two pairs of iterators 
that access some container and perform some operation on data so that we're transforming it. And that's really all it is, just a bunch of little building blocks that allow us to do interesting things with algorithms. So I'll look through them, get you familiar with how to read the documentation, and move on from there. So with that said, folks, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hope you've been enjoying this series thus far. And as always, if you'd like, you can go ahead to my website at courses.mshaw.io and follow along with the C++ programming language series here so you can track your progress as we'll have a bunch of the different algorithm videos. All right, folks, with that said, thanks for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.